Welcome back, WNST, Taos in Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. We are positively a drug city in my homeland of Dundalk, coming down to home stretch on the 25th anniversary celebration. But we're just getting started. We're going to be doing 25 stories of glory over the next 25 weeks here. Uh, commemorating all the cool stuff we've done. It's all brought to you by the Maryland Lottery. Uh, we're giving these away at Drug City today. Allison's getting number 19 for Johnny Unitas. There you go. Hope you get a winner there. It's a little folded, but that might be might be good luck. Uh, Allison Elliott's here. Steve Elliott's here from Elliott Family Chiropractic. That's the family part of that. The boys couldn't be here. Bill Yerman's hanging out uh, a little bit longer, talk some rock and roll. Steve, you got two guys with bad backs here, right? Like, I mean, seriously, we could sit here and talk about backs all the time. Window Nation's got your back, 866-90-NATION, uh, if you want to uh, get involved with Windows. Uh, my one-year anniversary is the 8th of August, and that was the day that uh, my cat started loving looking out the window and the breeze started coming in. I like good weather. You've been trying to fix me 25 years, right? I mean, Jesus. trying to, right? I mean, I'm unfixable. Some things are beyond, and you might be one of them. <laughs> is that a legit Hawaiian shirt, or is that like one to give away? That's not a giveaway. That's a real one, right? No, this came, this came from the uh, from the Orioles store. From the store, but that's not the giveaway. No, so this is not the. No, giveaway. that's like a that's a that's a legitimately nice one. Yeah, it's my mom. My mom, she just buys anything that's got an Oriole on it. Number one, and whenever she gets a disbursement from retirement, she it burns a hole in her pocket. She starts buying stuff, and I always say, I'm like, hey, hold on to your money for a couple of days. I mean, you don't have to buy everything right away. I mean, he just. I didn't like, see you wear Oreo stuff for twenty. You ain't a real fan. You ain't one of them real fans. <laughs> yeah, I, every day I go in now, I get adjusted with him. You know, I'm away to yoga, and uh, you know, big shout out to Planet Fitness. Appreciate your sponsorship too. Uh, you know, I come in and it's Oreo this, Oreo that, Oreo, Oreo. Sca- oh, I mean, I said in the last segment you were here for it. Five bucks, Allison just won. There we go. We got a winner. We got a winner. <laughs> Truck City winner. Pay for my lunch, baby. I knew 19 was going to be a lucky number. I just knew that. Uh, and the heartbeat of baseball, your boy was watching the team because he's in your, in, in your shop sometimes as well. He was talking Oriole baseball with me a little bit more last year. Mm-hmm. He was going to some games, yep. and, and he's a young, you know, Bel Air kid. Did he play ball? Little, little league, yeah. Play a little baseball. Okay. But, before, I mean, he would, before he moved over to rugby. But I, I, your kid, how is he now, 30? 29. Okay, so I don't think of him as being 12 anymore, but my kid doesn't care. My kid's right. pushing 40. Your kid cares. Does yeah, your daughter care? Not so much. Not More like her, you care. Her husband does, and that at least gets her interested in it, but the Orioles were never really apart for them because, you know, they sucked for so long. Right. There was a big gap, right? There's a big gap. But the three of us, I mean, you're wearing Orioles stuff right now. Every Rasid came. Everybody's got Oriole hats on yesterday. Ed Lauer came by. He gave me the 1997 wire to wire so I could dream a little bit. Right. I said they lost. But right. uh, nonetheless, yeah. I was there for that one, too. Still. So we, but, we, dude, this is 26 years ago, and it's a bond that oh, yeah. we have, and it's a bond – that the community has, and as I said earlier, and I'll continue, I'll spike the ball on this. I'm really proud of Free the Birds. Like when I think about the top 25 things we've ever done, I don't think Free the Birds is number one, but I think it's in the top five. Mm-hmm. And for me, I'm really proud of it because it it really sets an example for your 30 year old kid who was t- 14 or whatever that 13 when they threw me out, 12 when they threw me out. That he when he's 12, he didn't even know what, you know like anything about it. And they had stunk for eight years when your kid was 12, and everybody was off the bandwagon. I'm like, they're going to lose the city. We're going to lose the franchise. I mean, like if they still stunk again this year, if they still stunk this year and it didn't work, and this clown that owns a team is born on third, thinks he had a triple, and he doesn't have a lease, where, right. where would we be if 6,000 people were showing up at the games right now? I mean, we're in a danger zone with that, right? Yeah. But they come back, and here we all are, because it, it's that important to us. It is. And that's why I did a walkout on a billionaire owner. Yeah, I mean, um, for me as a child, this was my life. I would go to summer camp and you know, had, couldn't wait until I got the box scores sent to me by mail. They'd be four days late, but I didn't care. And you know, I never went to bed without knowing the score of a West Coast game as a kid. Like, I would stay up till one thirty in the morning getting the final radio, score. Transistor radio, yeah. Right. yeah. And that's how passionate it was. And to have it really just ripped away, it's just such a – just such a um, – It was just, a civic it, crime. It, it, it really was. <laughs> and, you know, now um, my two brothers have been saying to me, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. They never left. Uh, they stayed and followed whatever they know everybody they know the players they know how deep our system is and um, they said it's coming it's coming I'm like I can't you know what and I as we got into the end of last year I was living in Toronto for a couple months and I went to the last series and I went to the I think the Saturday game can't remember there were 
We took two out of three, but we didn't. It wasn't enough. I mean, we were just on the cusp of potentially making the playoffs. But just to have a meaningful game in September last year in Toronto was just fantastic. And now, now every game matters. Now yeah. every game, every night. You know, I love these six forty starts. You know, you're done at you know <laughs> nine o'clock. Like, we sound like <laughs> old <golden> people, agers, <laughs> right? I mean, seven o five is fine, I guess. But the games are faster. Even my mother could stay up late enough when they played at seven <laughs> o'clock. What's that's, wrong with you guys? Yeah, we're, you know, we're getting <laughs> the hell old. Are we it doing makes me laugh, right? <laughs> right? it's, oh, it's nine o'clock. Aren't they done yet? It's over. Right. It's nine o'clock. I gotta go to sleep. He's pissed because he doesn't get off till seven o'clock. Some nights it's That's the right. third can, inning by cannot, the time he goes. Cannot out. get down there. Right. <laughs> there is something weird though. Like they played in Philadelphia a couple weeks ago, and the game was over like eight yeah. forty. Yeah. Six. And I'm like, if it's driven up, I'd be home at ten o'clock. Right. right? That's bed. crazy. In bed, it used to be faster than walking to the game. Think about that. You get home at eleven thirty. You know, I marvel as I get older. And we're in Dundalk, and I like talking about my father when I'm over here because my father, uh, we talked about Costas. My father would go to the point every day. So I'm a kid. I was born in 68, so you know, summer 79 was a special summer for me and my dad. I was 11 years old. But my dad didn't get summers off. He wasn't a school teacher. He worked at the mill. Right. My dad worked 7 to 3 at, you know, every day. Um, and he, my dad walked in from the bus 10 after 4 every day. My dad caught, left, woke up at 5.15, left the house around 5.40, to get a 6 a.m. bus to be at the point at 7 o'clock. And this is, my father was 55 years old when I was five, right? So my father's in his late 50s. My, I'll be 55 in a few weeks. I cannot imagine chasing a six-year-old boy with my intellect, my energy. You think my energy's hellacious now. I mean, they called me tireless in the Dundalk Eagle 25 years ago. I mean, I don't even sleep. You know this. I sleep four hours a night now. <laughs> my father would take me to Memorial Stadium on the bus on an 88-degree day to see Paul Splitorf throw for the Royals in 1978. I'm 10 years old. We would leave at – he would come home and say, we're going to the game. Get some food on the table. Let's, Liz, we're going to add 445. We're at, getting on the bus. We're going to be – I want to be there for BP. 7.30 game. Now, those games were two and a quarter. They'd be, yeah, most more. games at 9.45, 10 o'clock. Right. We'd be on the bus back in Highland Town, 10.25, 10.30. Catch a 10.30 bus, be home at 10.45. Mom's waiting up for the 11 o'clock news. My dad would go to bed. And I would marvel that my dad could go to bed at 11 o'clock and be out the door making coffee at 5.30 in the morning. And my mother would be waking me up to go to school, not in the summer, but in April and May. Yeah, yeah. And I couldn't get my ass out of bed before 10 o'clock on a summer morning, right? And now when I get older, I have the energy. That I could stay awake later if I had to. But this 6.40, 7.05, I mean, it was weird to me, but it's – quickly going to become stock but it really screws up the ability to get to the game at six you know like, yeah, it, 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 like it, there's the, no pre-gaming it doesn't help the city it's nobody's going right. to dinner before a 640 game right I what, mean, what are the bar the bar owners saying like has that been discussed I don't think anybody cares about the bar. I don't think anybody – there's nobody that cares about anything other than the billionaire having his way and whether we get a lease or not. I don't, I don't think any of this is really being done to help the city. This is being done to enrich the angel. I mean, I believe that because I've witnessed it for 30 years, and I don't see any, like, that they really care about what's going on yeah, but downtown. The, but I, I hear you, but the numbers are so astronomical now what the values of these teams are. There has to be some sense of civic responsibility. He that, didn't have a lease. I understand that, but people, you know, it's negotiating. We don't know what's exactly happening. My point is that you, when you are in that position where the money doesn't matter, um, the question is, what is enough? The money always matters to these people. But, it, yeah, I mean... I mean, actually, you know, I mean, the money never does matter. But it, you have a valuation now that is so off the charts of these baseball teams. Off the charts as compared to what? Elon right. Musk bought the uh, biggest, you know, football communication team. thing in the world and threw me off and people like me because it makes them feel good. But I'm saying that the values have gone so far through the roof. John that Angelos I believe... doesn't have any value on money. He has value on eat. Did you see his press conference? I didn't. Okay, well. I'm not as tied to it, clearly. Well, I, I, this has been a lifetime I, I mean, I gave him a chance, right? What like happened? I, what like, happened? At the uh, he's beating up his brother in court and his mother and this and that. He takes the team over. He did a Martin Luther King Day press conference to hide from the media. Dan Connolly... Who's not me? Dan's like a nice guy. Dan showed up and he was an asshole to Dan, and basically to the fans. And he said, "Come down, I'll open the books. I'll open the books." He's a liar, and now we're trying to find him for a lease. Bill Cole, the other Bill Cole, not my Bill Cole, city councilman, yeah. for, you know, said, "What are we doing here?" And I talked. To, I texted with Bill last week. He said, "I said what I said." You know, I don't have any more comment. I'm like, fine. Um, I say what I say, but. 
We're all into it again. Yeah. And this is either dangerous or great because... So is there... Is, you believe there's a leverage play now because the Orioles are good and look like they're going to be good for the next 10 well, years? Well, leverage is he doesn't have to do anything, right? I mean, like, right. He, he, he can go day to day. We, he, he literally he has ne- to milk in the cow. To, 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 to you negotiate know, against like, himself. You know, you got a daughter. At some point, you want her to get married. Before, right. Before we, right? I mean, he, he doesn't have to get married. Right. Because nobody believes he's leaving. Even though he lives in Nashville, and they're and, and right. they're, nobody believes he's leaving. Nobody believes. And if, Earth if you was think leaving this either. guy <laughs> wouldn't get an armada of attorneys, he got an armada of attorneys last year to beat up his brother. Like, c- come on, man. C- c- come on. Like anybody that would trust John Angelos, either doesn't know him, doesn't know anybody that's tied to him, or just hasn't watched. I don't think there's anything trustworthy here, but I do think this is a test for us civically, right? This is a test to say we're good now. And I know the arrogance of the old, and it wasn't the old. John was involved in this. Every time things got screwed up, John was involved, and then but Dad he, would send but, him out. But he was tw- in his 20s okay, and 30s. But every time they would, their arrogance to me after yeah. 1998 yeah. was always this here. They, they ate on this. They ate on 1997. Right. When we win, you'll all come back. You'll be crying to get playoff. You'll, be, you, you'll pay whatever you have to pay. I don't see that to be wrong so far. Like, they're winning. The stadium feels like it's Start. slowly picking slowly. up, right? Yeah. But I've compared this a little bit to the Major League movie, right? When the woman wanted to move the franchise, right? They wanted the team to be City's terrible. City's bad, can't get help, can't, uh, you know, all the things that you could say if you were to pack up and leave Baltimore can be said, right? right? So, for me, if you, you know, $600 million, he, Wes Moore can't give John a better deal. Because that would open up the Ravens to come back and get a better deal. So he's it's locked in. There's there's a so word. Then what are, what's the negotiation then? If well, it's 600 he's hired, for each team, he's hired a lobbyist to go to the federal government to try to get part of the federal money that's part of the stimulus. To su- I don't. He doesn't talk to me, so I don't know. I just know that there have been lobbyists that have been hired to get federal money because of what Atlanta has built what San Diego built, that the stadium revitalized downtown. And I'm thinking to myself, we built the damn thing for you 30 years ago. We're supposed to re- – you, you and your family has so mismanaged this. Well, in front of to, everyone, right. Talk to, to think that there's any level of confidence that you're going to be the deep thinker that's going to fix our city? Dude, you, you, fix your baseball team. Yeah. You know, get people get, – get a, get a media deal. Get, get fans vested again to, that I'm seeing because it's starting. We're talking baseball right now. Training camp. It's August 4th. Right. Show me an August 4th the last 25 we've years talked and we're about talking baseball. about baseball. Maybe so last year. it's on our tongue again and it's starting to be concerning again. And it should be concerning that there's no lease. And it should be concerning to say, what do you want? At what point are you going to front face and just say what, what you're looking for? The 600 is bond financing. Is that what that is? Yes. It was the, the – st- because both the stadiums are 30 years old and it's tied, right? right? And, and it was part of, it was tied to the 15 year lease that Steve Bashotti signed. Right. Which is, we'll give you this money for these improvements. You sign a 15 year lease, which is not on you. They don't sign 30 year leases when they, new right. stadiums 15. do that. But 15 is 15, and Steve will be 80 years old. And his kids aren't going to have the team. I mean, I think it's pretty clear Steve's going to sell it to somebody else that's not going to be named Bashotti. Eh, John Angelos doesn't. My point is when you lose civic trust, when John Angelos very is hard one to get time yeah. that he comes out in front of people for the coming out party, and he's a complete a-hole and a jerk to the people in the room on Martin Luther King Day trying to run and hide instead of saying, here's my plan. This is what I'm going to do for this. Because Larry <laughs> Lachino, and, and he, when they went, we had a plan for the Orioles. It was going to be an old-fashioned stadium, and Stedman wrote tombs trying to get that stadium in Port Covington. Excuse me, Baltimore Peninsula. Like... Stedman thought that stadium should have been there. So there was a real civic debate about where the stadium was going to go, what it was going to do. What are we doing all this money? Who are we giving this? Eli who? You know, like mm-hmm. all of that. This is just $1.2 billion that we're just saying, you purple, you orange, give money. Make city better. I don't know. I, I don't know that keeping the Ravens here the next 15 years is more important than fixing the schools or fixing crime, yeah. but I wouldn't have said that 25 years ago today when the, sa- when the station opened because I believed in sports. I don't believe in sports owners anymore. Right. You don't believe that there is the civic responsibility that is needed to improve our You towns. have some thought that a billionaire is going to say enough's enough, and I haven't met that guy yet. All right. I, yeah, I, I hold out hope. I hear you. Well, you're a Democrat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. More optimists. For, for you with the baseball thing, you, you, you feel it in your – people walk in every day with a hat on, right? Yeah. 
Oh yeah, it's 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 certainly turned a tide. I mean, there was talk five, ten years ago, but it was never good talk, <laughs> right? Or it might have been it might have been fun for the first six weeks of the year because you know it's that it's that eternal spring. It's always next year. There's always a chance, right? And then and then June would hit, especially the, well the All Star game would hit, and and they would just All Star game. How about like April nineteenth? Well, and we were done. <laughs> to, you know, to, depending upon the season, but sure. you know, everybody hope springs eternal. And so there was always chat, but most of it was not good chat. Now it's all it's it's universally good chat. But your mother loves it. You talk to your mother about it every day. Oh yeah, my mom's a huge baseball fan. So was my mother, right? Yeah. So so I mean that that's a that's a beautiful thing for you. You you it was gone. It just for all of us, right? Yes. That, whatever that yes. connection was, other than and I you know I love Ed Lauer, but you know Ed's the only one I saw at the stadium the last five years, and he was always getting the shot behind home play. I mean, there's twenty five hundred people down there, and Luke. And yeah. I don't know what to make. That's not sustainable, right? Now, we're wondering what about this is sustainable, not just on the field, but, like, if we don't go back and give this creep money, how do we sign Adley Rutschman? That's where it is, right? Right. It's, that, that, yeah. has to be, that has to come from some largesse that maybe comes out of their gambling budget, but it's not going to come out of Masson. It's not going to come out of a Chick-fil-A sign on the wall. It's not going to come about a bunch of rich guys getting together and buying skyboxes at the banks. Every right. bank's going to have a Provident Mercantile. That's all. That model's gone. I don't. So where is that money coming from? Well, it's coming from your kid getting him an orange carpet plan. And, a, yeah. and, and, and we're going to buy this and we're going to pay $500 a year to be an Orioles fan where we're going to get the cable television, we're going to get a five-game package and a dollar hot dog when we get there because they're going to want to soak the first 500 bucks out of you to make up for the 200 they were missing from the cable bill. Mm. I mean, there's going to be a different model. So is Mass in, in, in trouble? You mentioned something about regional networks. They're all in trouble. Because... Sinclair lost $75 million. What? Well, on, on, I know, what a shame. I know my heart's break. <laughs> but on, on the regional sports network, the regional sports networks are, are done. They're over with. Like, yes, they, they, in, in New York? Well, or? yes and Nesson have a, a – they're a real news network. I mean, they, they, okay. they don't run Chinese ping pong on Saturday morning like – Like Mass. Like Mass. I mean, Mass runs – there's no program. There's no right. news. There's no – Right. There's no – there. there's a ball game. Uh, and, and there's only a half five hour a before week. and a half hour after. And there's Apple – Television that steals right. their games and Fox, and the more they win, the more they're on ESPN on a Sunday night, right? right. I mean, so there's there's a lot of moving parts. I don't think there's any – they don't know what the future holds for media, but they know they have a good game. They know they have good players. They have a bird. You know, they have Eddie Murray. They can still market and boot. Yeah, they, they have, have a history. They have a legacy that yeah. your mother still feels like they're a family member, and she's going to put an Oriole Absolutely. ornament on her Christmas tree and hang a no thing on her car and – that's great, but where the revenue isn't coming from your mother. Your mother's not making them rich. You're not making them rich. You know what I mean? Your she's, kid's not making them rich. She's trying. Right. <laughs> but, but my point is, who's going to make it? Who, who's going to pay Adley Rutschman? Us, the people, the state of Maryland, and a $600 million sweetheart deal for a billionaire to have a stadium. And then it's like, all right, what good is it to the city? Right. If, if, if we're going to go if through If people this. are going to park in the parking lot and le- get there at 622 for a 640 game and leave at 905. I don't know. I mean, they have to rethink this. Right. And I think John knows that, which is why he's going to the federal government trying to get them to subsidize his wealth. Right. But if you're saying that you're saying both things, you're saying we need to make sure that you're going to fund this team. You're going to pay Adley. You're going to pay Gunner. I mean, you can't imagine what's got coming down the track. You can't keep all these guys. Right. Theoretically. But if they've been making $50 million a year the last 10 years and they love the people. I mean, the fact that they can't afford anybody is absurd. Right. Uh, here. I mean, it's absurd. Well, can, and there's let, no salary let, cap. It's different when, when right. Eric says, uh, couldn't bring Marcus Peters. In baseball, they can do whatever they want. They have the lowest payroll. So the fact that they went through the trading deadline, a friend of mine who's a very astute friend sent me a text right after trading deadline and said, John Angelos is, is you know, junior achievement. You know what I mean? He's not, he's not a real player in this. He didn't come forth and say, we need to win, and we need to win now. Get that Dylan Cease young kid in here. Deal off holiday, whatever. Let's get pitching in here. And instead, I think Mike Elias is running it to that point, but when Mike Elias goes and wants money. I saw that ESPN thing the other night. They were on, and David Cohn said, eh, it's really nice when you got your bank next to you. And that's when they, had, they were texting in the, in the skybox. And... David Cohn thinks of John Angelos as Mike Elias's bank. 
<laughs> right? Like literally. Sure. That's the bank. You know, that's the is. bank. It is the bank, right? right? And the bank has and, to approve it. And this guy can't get a lease on. Right. Right? I mean, you know, so I don't I don't Listen. I, I, I would I don't have a lot of confidence in him. I, I have a lot you. of confidence in Mike Elias. I have confidence in Jack Flea. They might win the World Series in 10 weeks. They might. I mean, but the, the depth in this organization that we've all been sleeping on is supposedly, like, legendary. Like, triple A, double A players. We got 20 players that these other teams they wanted. They play nine at a time. Right. So, I, something great happened. We have the, the asset now has formed after all of this time. How do you then use your asset properly? Do you trade some of the future? Like, is there a good strategy here? Well, thing Luke or, said to me this or it's like, or it's like, oh my God, look what we have. We have the deepest, uh, and you wake up one day and now you're the best team in baseball for the next ten years. I mean, that's kind of what it, it feels like. It can't be for ten years. Well, no, obviously, ten six years, years. Ten years has a <laughs> lot of strategy here involved. That's going to take John Angelos's money. It's going to take the marketing part of the team creating that money to where there really are 24,000 people down there on Tuesday nights in May and June right. and the sellout games are sellouts and, and the bobblehead nights are bonkers and yep. f- like we know what that looks like. 91, we, we 92, yeah, 93, yeah, we, we did it. We, right. But we did it with Washington fans that are now gone. Right. right. So this is really, and we did it with me really caring when I was young enough to get down there and chase girls and spend money and want to be there four nights a week and Same. want to go to Baja Beach Club. At, like there was a yeah. whole thing about being down there. And now the next generation doesn't do that and hasn't done that. And might never do and that. Might, and might, might be watching that. a lacrosse game or might decide, I just want to watch it on TV or I just want to watch the highlights or I just want to. They're betting. hungry betting. I, it, it, the, the it betting, has to be the, the betting. betting part. I mean, that, that's going to be that's big, where they that's think be a big part from. of it. Right. It, yeah. The, and the none of us have bet on Maybe you bet on a baseball game, but I. Oh, yeah. Oh, you, you, oh, it's you, yeah, you, it's wild. I can't believe the things that they've got. That's up Cameron. That you're allowed that's to do. what Cameron does. I mean, he. So your kids in the That's what I'm saying. The yeah. next generation. That that's stuff. what they're doing. Yeah, they're you know, five these, dollars, ten all dollars. Young guys. Parlays. The, yeah, I mean, there's so many you know, choices. Prop, weird prop bets and stuff, and they're only spending, you know, fifteen, twenty bucks or whatever with all your these. Your mother, weird, father, anybody? They never bet on a baseball. They bet on football, Colts, but right. betting on baseball is not something I've ever. I've been on the radio thirty-two years. Yeah, I have never met. A degenerate, you know, ba- uh, baseball ba- better. somebody that talks to me. No one has ever called the station and said, right. I'm betting on this seven. I would well, go to Vegas and had a bet on it. That's right. football, way of life. Right. Way of life, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, but, but, but these guys, these kids, these young kids are doing all these lineups, these, you know, different permutations. They're picking, you know, nine players out of a, out of the, out of a hat, so to speak, and they're putting a the lineup together and turning in a bet on that. And then they're doing, I mean, all kinds of permutations and stuff. These wild right. and, and, betting and think scenarios. about that. That makes you watch the games. Yeah. So you got kids that are betting on pitches or, or, yeah. or, yeah, you don't bet on horse race or you the don't first watch. five innings right, or right, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. But they're so attuned. And to your point, Steve, you've got these, um, these lineups that you can fill out. So every night you're into all the games. Right. My brother does that. He does the lineup thing where you pick a guy on it, Philly. And I just guy, don't have a betting it's, Jones to win but, five bucks like no, that. Understand. I just don't. But it's I'm what, glad it, I don't. You know, you know what fantasy has done for, for football. I mean, all these young folks are, that have been doing fantasy for years now, all these leagues, they, they watched every Dalgun game. I would go to – I'm talking Rugby. to Cameron's mother about this problem. <laughs> I'm going to have a talk with her. I would be at rugby practice on a Thursday night, and there'd be a guy standing on the sideline, not practicing for 20 minutes, because he's watching the football game, the Thursday night football game, because he needs this running back to do a certain thing. And I'm like, what are you doing over there? He's like, uh, I'm checking something out. <laughs> I'm coaching rugby. By the way, Tom Pierce sends a hello to oh. you. He sat with me for an hour and a half. We did Philly sports. He run Classic 5 Golf, so yep. one of our great sponsors, when John Maroon was here as well, so get out to Clifton Park or, or, or Carroll Park or Mount Pleasant or Tom. Pine Ridge. And, um, and he, he said, Steve's still coaching rugby. He said, he said to me, and I, he wanted to do it on the air, and I forgot to do it, and I apologize. I've been a bad, been a bad client sponsor. He wanted to talk about how, much, how you fixed his back. <laughs> he, 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 That's he, lovely. He, he, wanted, he, he said, Steve, fix me. I'm like, Steve's trying to fix me. He's been trying for 25 years, but I'm screwed up. Um, you know, give a shout out because I want to get Allison up. I want to say goodbye to Billy because he's got Springsteen line to go sit in. <laughs> Springsteen's coming to town in three weeks. He and his, his daughter got to go. We're going to go out tonight. tonight. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah, on the streets. For, for you and Bax, because Billy, you got a bad back. I got a bad back. Once we get to this age, you've heard this story before, and I've been pimping you for 25 years, and I yep. see you several days a week, um, and and I'm in your office from time to time and see fans of mine come through and talk sports or whatever they do. You've been in the community 25 years. I, I, how, how many, when, how, before me, how many years before me were you? I opened in 89. So you'll be 35 years next year. Yeah, next year. I'm 34 now, yeah. Did you celebrate 25? Did you do something? Uh... Uh, 
not big, nothing big. I'm you called just, me 25 years ago this yep. summer. I don't. Was it before we went on the air or after? It was just know? after, just after you guys went on the air. I was like, I got to get on this gig, right? Uh, because I mean, your tower is uh, as the crow flies, probably a mile from my office, right? Right. I mean, to get there driving is three miles. <laughs> uh, you poor thing. Um, There's a reservoir between us. <laughs> yeah, right? That's a big valley. Big body of water. <laughs> That's right. So uh, yeah, I, I mean, I heard you talking, and I was like. No, I got to get on with this guy. Yeah, I've told this story. And it's like this guy's a, as I. He might be here 25 years from now. I better I, be nice to him. I didn't think about that. Chad Steele didn't think about it that way. Neither <laughs> Greg Bader, but that's all. I just, I just needed to get on the air with you because you were, as I said at the time, you were cast out of the inner circle, right? You Like every chiropractor. Right? So I was like, well, I'm fringe of society. He's French society. I let's can see, hang with that let's guy. Let's see if we can uh, put something the together. The island of misfit Baltimore. <laughs> That's what it was. That's what yeah. We are. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I'll use that up. Uh, but you, you, you know, you found some help in chiropractic. I think for, yeah. for all we do, when we lose our health. Yeah, it's hard. And I know you've yeah, had some health. When you lose your health, my wife, I mean, mm, you lose yeah. your health, it. Well, I couldn't move a year and a half ago. It got me through. Chad Steele used an excuse to throw me out. I mean, I lost my career because I had a bad back, allegedly. Um, but everything changes when you can't. Everything, move. and there's no doubt. Um, on my way out, Nestor, I just want to say um, I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, our relationship over the last probably 15 years. It's just because I got your Springsteen tickets. Yeah, that helps a little. <laughs> when are we getting uh, Nils on the call? On the horn. Nils got a new album out, and they were just – like in Europe running, oh, and yeah. now they're home for like for an hour, two weeks. And then go and back then on the road. seeing his dog. I, I feel like a jerk. Yeah, like he's it. coming to Baltimore in September. I mean, it's we, time. We should do something. Absolutely. He loves love me. To he get misses me. I haven't bothered him for tickets. <laughs> he loves me and he misses I, me. I, I went to five shows, and I didn't bother him for tickets. Right, so now and he, I sent him pictures every night of I'm behind you. And he, <laughs> and he owes you a little radio show. Nils owes me nothing. nothing. Fri- friends don't owe. They do because they want to. Well, and that's I'll why leave we're leaving him alone. He's with his wife for the first time. Exactly. I've watched him run around Europe. Are, are you happy with Bruce right now, or are you not? Um, I was worn out. I, I paid $400 to go see him at State College. I didn't want to go. I literally didn't no, want to go. There. Because no, it was the same I, show every I, night. It was. It wore me out. I, yeah, I mean. Very dis- it was very disappointing. I, I, I bl- I'm disappointed in every. I'm disappointed in the price point. I'm disappointed that when well, I went now, to shows, people were bitching about it. I'm just... I, I don't have any tickets for the spring. The tickets, I'll go to a show or the fall. I'll go to a show or the, two. But I'm, I'm, I'm The I'm tickets a little, at the Meadowlands now are under 100 bucks. I mean, right. I think that that ship kind of sailed. Yeah. And, you know, now he's back. And the hope is that he does, you know, freeform concerts like he used to and not the Broadway set that he has been doing here, which is basically just playing the same songs every night. Bother me. With, with really, a, really with a small out. change. <laughs> bum me out, dude. I'm laughing. Well, it, the problem is, like, you know, we go to a lot of them. So you're like, okay, let's have some other things. And no, the reason a lot of we people go get to a lot of them is because they were all different. I understand. Right. It's like going to the Dead, dead yeah, concert, right? Exactly. I mean, just you're like, chasing songs. Right. Uh, to me, it sounds like you guys are screaming, get off my lawn. <laughs> I'll just say this. Now, hold on. Now, now, hold on. Hold on. This is a dead of winter. Everybody Funny. knows I've traveled to Australia and New Zealand twice chasing Bruce. I've traveled to Europe chasing Bruce. I've wanted to chase Bruce three different times in Europe, and, and because of my wife's illness, I wound up getting tickets for um, Don Sheeler and his daughter have pictures in Rome that they used our tickets that Nils wow. left on back in 16. So, like, I, I, and, and I love Bruce, and I listen to Bruce at home. But when the, the ticket scam for him yeah. and Taylor Swift, yeah. for, for, a, for anyone well, yeah. taking advantage. Yeah. I sit here and I talk about John Angelo's taking advantage of your mother and me yeah. and all of us. <laughs> and Steve Bishotti <laughs> running off to his yacht and saying, Jameson, you're a real media <laughs> member. Nestor, you got long hair. I don't talk to you anymore. Like, like, I have soured on some of the experience of this. But I went and saw Seal three times a couple months ago. And it was transcendent. And it was... It was, it was, it was Similar to a Broadway thing, mm-hmm. so I can endure that. But with Springsteen, that's sort of a broken trust. That when I bought tickets for five shows when the tour was coming out, that I wasn't going to fly to Tampa, pay three hundred dollars to get in, go up to Atlanta. I only paid fifty bucks in Atlanta. Went down to Austin, Texas, a paid one twenty-five bucks. Went to Houston, I paid twenty twenty-eight dollars in I, Houston. I saw you in Houston. So we were Houston, right? Valentine's night, right? Yep. So I went to these shows, and every single one of them was the same. And by the time I came back from Austin. When I'm driving three hours from Houston to Austin, I saw my families. So, I mean, I made, I saw friends. I, I got good weather in Tampa. It was good. Froze my ass off in Atlanta. I just was like, for the first time in my life, I'm really disappointed in Bruce Springsteen. Listen, you know I'm what not I mean? Gonna, like, I'm not going to join you with that. Uh, you know, he's earned the right to do it any way he wants as far as I'm concerned. When I was a kid, I used to say the guy could do Mary Had a Little Lamb for four hours and I'd be fine. Obviously, now I want more. 
And I understand your point, but this is kind of what he's done. He does a tour. It's pretty automatic with the sets, maybe a, f- a couple changes. And then it's all signs in free form. So if we're having this conversation six weeks from now, and it's the same show again, which I will be very surprised. So will I. Then I think. So will I. Then, then yes. I'm, I'm going to jump on this I want to see that you. Philadelphia night when he opens up in New York Serenade. Exactly. And in the jungle land and starts moving around a little bit. You know, he doesn't and, have to move and, around. And audibles, you know, something. Right. Somebody pulls I'm, a sign I'm up good. and says, I'm you good. know. That'll, that'll, that, he'll get 100 bucks out of me at the Metal Lands. Right, that's what's going to happen. So okay. Anyway, Nestor, I've enjoyed our relationship over the last 15 He's years. He's mad at me, man. I talk bad about Bruce. On, that's okay. I can get past it. <laughs> he was trying to get off before. You know, I was a music <laughs> critic before. I, I know what you were. I followed you. I did. News America. Uh, no, were you at the sun? Both. Both. Yes. Writing about um, the Ravens concert. The, there were no the Ravens. Oh, the band. The band. Yeah. Oh, yeah. By the way, I invited Rob Fahey, and he was, he's got a lot of gigs. Rob's going to come on, raised on radio. I, I invited Rob yesterday because I wanted Rob to come by and be a part of my anniversary. Uh, he couldn't make it, but we're going to have Rob Fahey on. Awesome. Maybe Keith Brewer, too, if we do that. Make right. it happen. All right. That's Billy Urban, everybody. Uh, Steve Elliott's going to stay because my back's going to need help uh, after sitting in this chair. We're at Drug City. Um, you giggle when I say Drug City, don't you? You've always tittered. People titter when you say Drug City. Never been there. Get down to Dundalk. Everything you need, everything you want. Uh, the fountain is downstairs. We're in the tasting room right now. Steve's over on Joppa Road uh, fixing people, fixing souls. Elliot, family, chiropractic life. You hear him on the, in the air. And Bill's in line for a Springsteen show somewhere and <laughs> off the grid waiting for the Orioles to win a championship. Exactly. I'm Nestor. We are WNST AM 1570. My thanks to the Maryland Lottery, Window Nation, our friends at Drug City. The next segment's going to be the best segment because Allison's going to come up and we're going to gang up on Steve and have fun and uh, talk about <laughs> Pee Wee Herman. Back for more on WNST AM 1570 right after this.